This tutorial provides quantitative guidance on when to select straight girders or resort to kinked slash curved girders when dealing with a curved bridge span. So you've got a curved bridge span with a length L, which is along the curve with the radius R, and it has a uniform deck width of capital B, and all these three dimensions are in meters. And assume that this bridge span subtends an angle theta at the center of the radius. Let's call that point O. Okay, so for this, the first thing we would do is determine the angle theta as a function of the span length L and the radius of curvature R. And for this, we would take the ratio of the arc of the bridge span to the total circumference of the circle. And that should be equal to the ratio of the angle subtended by that arc to the angle subtended by a full circle at the center, which is equal to 360 degrees. So this would give us theta as equal to 360 times L divided by 2 pi R. Now let's calculate theta in radians. So we'll call it angle subtended at center of curve of radius r in radians. We'll call it theta in radians would be equal to theta in degrees times pi divided by 180. Substituting the expression for theta in degrees and working out the math, you get theta in radians equal to L over R. You can also call this the span curvature angle. The next thing for us to do is to go to the mid span and calculate the ordinate PY. For this, we divide the arc into two equal halves, thereby splitting the angle theta. And this ordinate PY is the maximum distance between the chord XZ and the arc XYZ. So of course that would occur at mid span. YP would be equal to OY minus OP. Now notice that OX is equal to OY is equal to OZ, which is equal to the radius. And remember, the radius is to the center line of your bridge. To get to the outer edge of your deck, you would need to add another quantity, which is half the deck width B by 2. And we should actually correct that right here. It should be R plus B by 2. So this would be the radius till this point. Okay, let's call this equation one. We need to determine OP. So OP would be equal to OX times cosine theta by two. And we know that OX is also equal to R plus B by two. So this is equal to R plus B by two times cosine and we know theta from the previous slide is equal to L over R. So this would be L by 2R. Let's call this equation 2. Now substituting 2 in 1, we get YP is equal to using R plus B by 2 for OY minus from equation 2 now, R plus B by 2 times cosine L by 2R we can take r plus b by 2 out common and what you're left within the bracket is 1 minus cos l by 2r. Okay, so we have the value of yp now. Let's go to the last stage. I'm showing three gutter lines in the plan view. However, you can have as many gutter lines as you require for your bridge deck, but that's not the point. The point is to determine the maximum deck overhang at the exterior girder at the outside edge of the deck or the outer side of the curve. So if you look at section AA at mid span, you'll see the exterior girder and a concrete deck. What you're looking to calculate is the value of the overhang, which is L naught. So let's call this overhang length. L naught and L naught is equal to three components. This would be equal to PY that we just calculated plus the minimum deck overhang 
as the second component. If you directed your attention to the outside corner of the deck on the dashed blue line, which represents the edge of the deck, there is a minimum deck overhang you need to provide from the outside edge of the flange to the edge of the deck. And then there is a third entity and that would be half the width of your top flange and that would be small b by two. Now this minimum deck overhang, there might be guidance provided by British design manuals offered by your particular jurisdiction. So you should go in there and check it out in terms of what they offer. But typically for steel plate grid bridges, this could be anywhere between 150 millimeters to 250 millimeters. And then the top flange width, of course, varies. But for the sake of this example, I'm going to say my top flange is 500 millimeters or half a meter. And then B by 2 would be 250 millimeters. So L0 would be equal to PY plus, I'm going to use 250 also for the minimum deck overhang, plus another 0.25 meters for half of my flange width. This gives me PY plus 0.5 meters. Okay, so now the boundary between the decision of straight or kink slash curved girders is the maximum overhang length. So we'll say the max overhang length should be the lesser of two meters or 0.6 times the girder spacing. And if uh, straight girders are not able to meet this geometric limitation on the deck overhang, then we can say that kinked or curved girders are required. Okay, let's assume that I have a girder spacing of three and a half meters. So with a girder spacing of three and a half meters, the entity 0.6 times S would be 2.1 meters. And since I'm gonna take the lesser of two meters or 0.6 times S, two meters is the governing value that I'm going to use. So the condition I'm gonna to use to decide between straight versus kinked slash curved girders is that my overhang length should be less than two meters for straight girders to be feasible. Otherwise, I need to go to kinked slash curved girders, which means PY plus 0.5 meters should be less than or equal to two meters, which means PY should be less than or equal to a meter and a half. Now, using the value of PY from the previous slide, we get R plus b by 2, 1 minus cosine L by 2R should be less than or equal to 1.5 meters. So if you have a curved span and you know the radius, the deck width, the length of the span, using this condition, you should be able to make a decision of whether you can provide straight girders or you need to resort to a kinked or a curved girder system.